Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to Red Dirt Rods. Now today we are working on a scooter, but it's not the Harlix, it's not the one you've seen before. We're actually working on my 2006 Honda Big Ruckus, which actually has the same engine as what's in our Harlix. It's a 250cc Honda. This one, however, has been sitting for a really long time. I got it running right after we got it, but some stuff is kicked loose from the gas tank and clogged up the carburetor so it's not running. So what we're going to do is take our carburetor apart, rebuild it with a kit that we picked up from All Balls Racing. Yes, that is the actual name, All Balls Racing. Uh, so this is a uh, carburetor rebuild kit. Uh, it should boost it a little bit should get a little bit more output from it and uh, I think we've got a little jet in here a couple other things and we're gonna clean it up and show you guys how to do it for your project all right we got our 2006 Honda big ruckus in here now this actually has the same 250 cc engine that's in our uh, Honda Helix project, but this one, it's always run really well, but it sat for a long time before I bought it and some junk cut loose in the carburetor. I think it's all plugged up. So we're gonna put a custom carb kit in it. Maybe it'll run a little better. This thing is kind of a pain in the butt to work on. There's a lot. I should have grabbed that. There's a lot that you gotta take off. This is not a very, uh, easily serviced bike on the side of the road because you've got all kinds of different size fasteners. That's the biggest drawback of this bike, in my opinion. There's one behind, you gotta pull this. You got a hidden one. I know it's a Honda and you don't have to work on them that often, but they're usually gonna break on the side of the road. I've, this, I've had to push this one home a couple miles a couple of different times. Okay, so show you the guts. This is the filter. I've replaced this already. This is the fuel pump. I've replaced that already. So we got to go back here and find the carburetor, which is all the way back here. So we're going to take all of this stuff off. Motorcycles and bikes usually have very simple fasteners, at least they used to, because you have to work on them on the side of the road. You have to have this on a big ruckus in order for it to run. It's kind of like a little turbocharger, honestly. These veins on the motor spin and they draw air in and push air out into the air box. It actually does not run without this hooked up. I know that firsthand, I've tried. You gotta do all of that just to get to the air filter, which is right here. And this one's new, I replaced this when I first got it. So the carburetor is kept in place by a uh, clamp, a hose clamp all the way up here. Again, I don't know if I can get it out without, I don't know if it'll come out over here. Seriously, you got to use the whole tool kit. All right, so I've got the carb loose. I was thinking I could get this pulled off of the motor and pull it back and should be able to get to all the other, all the hard mounts. I can definitely rotate it. Put all my nuts and bolts from the top side in this one and all my nuts and bolts from the bottom side in this one. Tight reach. 
each comes into its own. And yeah, there's a possibility that it's gonna be really sick. Wow. So that's also how you get to the radiator cap. Now I can see the carburetor. And I can start disconnecting the electronics. So couldn't get it because the other screw holding the clamp is hidden behind some junk. So what we have here, if you look down in here, you've got to disconnect this so you can take the carb off, but you can't actually get to the disconnect pins on the plug, which are here, here on this side, and one in here, but they're up inside the shroud, and you've got to disconnect all three and I can get to the, I can get to that one. I can maybe push on this one from the outside, but I can't get to this one at all. There we go, okay. All right, so let me show you this. Okay, so now you get this off. There's a little clip right here, and this will come out. Now I can get to the other half of the clamp, and I should be able to pull the carburetor out now. There it goes, I think. There we go. There, I got it. That one will slide out. Now I should be able to get the carburetor out. Okay. Now I can see this one. Ow! Oh, there we go. There we go. So we're kind of doing this for two reasons. One, I need to ride my Ruckus. But the other thing is we've been asked about some performance mods on our Harlix. And so if this works on the Ruckus, then we're gonna throw one on our Harlix too. So first thing I'm gonna do is open this thing up. Pretty basic. We've got a gasket, some springs, a needle seat, um, and looks like a jet, a couple other little things. I'm just gonna open this up here. I'm gonna use a couple of these little bins. I'm gonna put all the parts into one bin. That's the new parts. There are some very tiny washers in here, so you gotta be careful, we don't wanna lose those. And this is the needle, I don't wanna lose that either. And the as we take this apart, the screws and whatnot will go into this bin. So we're gonna start on the bottom end because that's where most of this is gonna happen. And I'm just gonna take this apart as carefully as I can. There we go. Break all these loose first. I wanna break this down as minimally as possible. That way I don't have to mess around with stuff I don't have to take apart. Looks like the kit has new screws for the fuel bowl. I can see some corrosion on this screw right here. That's uh, fuel corrosion. All right, so that's the fuel bowl. Let's see if I can get this off without taking that off. Okay. All right, there's the fuel bowl. That's the gasket for that. All right, so this is carb dip. It works really well for cleaning varnish and corrosion from uh, carburetor parts. I'm just gonna take the parts and I'm just gonna drop them in here and let them soak. All right, so the pin that holds the floats, I'm just gonna put my pick on here. I'm just gonna tap it with my screwdriver handle if I can get this to work. There we go. Then carefully lift up on the float and there's our needle that in the old parts okay so let's see now we're gonna take this guy out all right so I'm gonna start by breaking that loose unthread this guy 
Okay, bring this jet out. Whenever you're building something like this, especially if you haven't done it before, I've never rebuilt this particular carburetor. You always wanna make sure you take pictures as you go so that you know where everything goes that you're taking apart. Move that. Should be able to pop this loose. You wanna be really careful. Our rebuild kit does not have any of these diaphragms. So you wanna be really careful when you're taking this stuff apart. And there we go. So to get to this, I'm gonna use a nut driver and it just gets a quarter turn and that little cap will fall out. And then we can pull this piece out and that gets replaced with our new beefier one. Start cleaning these parts real carefully with our carb cleaner and a towel. Just gonna use a water bottle with a hole popped in it to rinse it. Okay, last step before we can start putting stuff together is we gotta take this piece off. There we go. You gotta use a lot of pressure to remove these screws. You don't wanna strip them. Okay. We can pull that off. Okay, so the last step on our carb that we need to take off is this little uh, screw set. That's what they call it in the manual. And the replacement is slotted. It has a slotted head on it. Okay, so slight situation. The mixture screw, which is right here, uses a specialized screwdriver. It's got a, it's basically a, a, a round uh, hole. It's like a round sleeve with a flat on it. It's a square D is what they call it. I don't have one. The kit that we have comes with a replacement mixture screw that's slotted. I don't wanna pay 30 bucks for a tool I'm only gonna ever use once. So we're gonna redneck this because that's what we do at Red Dirt Rod sometimes. So I'm just gonna chuck this up lightly into my vise. So this is a 3 seconds bit. I'm gonna drill right in the center. <laughs> then I was gonna, my, the plan is to use these uh, snap ring pliers to go in here and See if I can use that to twist this out. And sometimes rednecking something works. Just like it is right now. So that's actually getting the job done. It's a bit of a faff, but uh, here we go. There we go. Nothing wrong with a little redneck engineering this is the adjustment screw they're the exact same piece except this has you can see it's hard to see in the video but this tip is a little bit smaller in diameter you have a little bit more adjustment and if you'll notice this is the original. See how short it is? And this is much taller. It gives you better access and that slotted so you don't have to have some stupid tool. All right, now we're ready to put this back together. So one of the reasons why I'm doing this video is because I cannot find anything out there on this other than a factory manual. The all balls racing kit doesn't come with any instructions and I can't find any other videos out there. So I figured why not? Um, it's a bit of a challenge doing something you've never done before and can't find any sort of guides on. I'm not gonna spend $150 on a manual just to rebuild a carburetor. We have to assemble the mixture screw, spring the new washer, that's a new spring, by the way. And the new O-ring, you need the smallest one. 
and that just sits on there like that. And then we carefully load this in and thread it. I'm going to thread this in till it touches the bottom and back it out two turns. One, two. Is that right? I have no idea. We'll find out. I'm going to flip this over. Oops. We have our original pump and we have the new pin. This pin drops in through to this hole, just like that. Then we reuse the original cap. In order to get this cap, I'm gonna use these long needle nose. There we go. And quarter turn. Now that's locked. It's got a little bit of a spring load there. Then this can go back into the carburetor. I'm going to use a little bit of this Royal Purple Sin Film. Just a very light amount of film on this just to give it a little bit of lubrication. I'm going to go ahead and wipe the edge of the rubber gasket as well. Probably not necessary, but I don't think it'll hurt. Then we line that pin up on the inside, rotate it. This little tab orients to this location on the body of the carburetor. Push the gasket in. And then we take this. There's a little tab here. You can see it. That goes over that. Take our spring. Make sure that the spring sits on the cup on the on the little there's a nipple inside the cap we'll make sure that that sits inside there there goes around it push that sucker down this hose has a retainer that goes on this outside screw this kit does come with new screws so we're gonna go ahead and use a new screw I'm just going to lightly thread these in. I'm not going to torque them down yet until I've got it completely put together. Uh, let's see. And then this, this piece is in good shape. Drop on there to keep it lubricated. And then this slides into here very carefully. You want to make sure it lines up. That piece probably didn't have to come off, but we took it off. And it's got this little horseshoe clamp that rolls around then new screw on the top this is for the connection we're going to take a new screw and we're going to put it on the clamp for the connector for the uh, pump piston that's what this is lightly thread that in now these two i don't think we needed to take those off so i'm going to go ahead and reuse the original screws because I don't think I have new ones for these. Now I'm going to go ahead and tighten these. Get my bigger screwdriver. These were torqued pretty heavy. This is the throttle position sensor. Snap that in place. And then this just drops in. Here we go. Real quick, things we learned about this carburetor. One, it's kind of difficult, but mainly the two electrical connections, this one for the TPS and uh, this one, which I believe is choke related, those do not need to come off. You need to remove this pot, which is for your accelerator pump and the uh, fuel bowl, which is down here. And you need to remove the idle, the fuel mixture screw, which is over here. Everything else can pretty much stay on the, uh, on the carburetor, but we wanted to take it all apart just to make sure it was all nice and clean. So this is the, uh, I'm gonna put this diaphragm back in here. 
Next we have our pump diaphragm. This is another diaphragm and that spring goes in. Let me just wrap this around like that and that pushes down and then start this one. Find it. There we go. Remember this one has this hose goes through this eyelet. So now we've got that. Then we're going to move to the fuel bowl. Wrap this thing up. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the fuel bowl out. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and clean the fuel bowl. Pull out the old, go in with the new. So this will just push in. Just like that. Then we're gonna set this aside while we wrap this up. This guy right here, this is our jet. This is what holds the jet. And the jet is up top. All right, so this is a seven millimeter. We're gonna use this seven millimeter wrench and then we're gonna use a flathead and we're gonna remove the jet. So now we pull the smaller jet, we toss that into our old parts. We grab the new larger jet and thread that guy in. Then we can take this and drop it back into the carb. Tighten that up. Next is the smaller jet and we're gonna drop that in. But you gotta be real careful on those jets not to slip with your screwdriver so that you don't cause any issues, uh, you know, bending or, or chipping the, the brass can create some flow issues. Okay. So before we put this in, you need to drop this over and put the new O-ring on it. Just like that. Anytime you use an O-ring, you want to lubricate it just a little bit so it doesn't snag or tear. Okay. And that can slide back in. And we'll install our horseshoe clamp. These are the floats. The float and the new, uh, the new needle. The needle drops into these grooves on the floats. The float drops back into position and then we take the pin that we drove out earlier and that gets pushed back in place. Line up the hole so that just pushes in just like that. I'm just going to use this very small tack hammer and just lightly tap on this. Be real careful not to touch the the float. Got. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put a little lubrication on the o-ring for the bowl and then slip which way slip this guy up under here and then we have four new screws for the bowl and we're done i'm just gonna snug them up Four corners, crisscross style, so that we don't crack the bowl. All right, now our carburetor has been freshened up. It's nice and clean, and we've got a big jet and needle and seat in here, so this should run a little bit better. We're gonna go ahead and throw this back in, fire it up, see what happens. All right, we got it running. We got it all put back together. We solved a little issue with the fuel pump. We had to make a little relay for it because the fuel timing module is dead on this, so I bypassed it. We're gonna ride this thing around a little bit, make sure it's safe to ride home, and we'll see you next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. All right, guys, see how she do. Runs really good.
definitely seems like it's stronger than it was before we did the uh, carb kit. Let's make magic.